when we look at starboard, it's important to remember that we are setting up a model, right? So we are imagining that we are producing product um, at our factory. That's this green icon here. And then we are shipping it in some manner, either over the ocean or via rail or via truck to a port of entry because we're making it outside of the United States and then from there we are then shipping it to one of our warehouses so in the case of here we have the potential for a warehouse in Michigan or a warehouse in Maryland and then from the warehouse uh, it goes to our customers right in this case here is Sharonville uh, the Cincinnati Ford plant all right, so the, uh, as we go through this project, the more data that you can put into your model, the more realistic you can put into your realism you put into your model, the better your model is, the more accurate your results are going to be. Um, but this software is a little bit on the tricky side, so we are going to go ahead um, and I'm going to walk you through some of the things that's going to make your life a little bit easier. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, we're going to come up here and we are going to make a new blank scenario so we have a blank canvas to work with. Okay, um, and then from there, we need to import the data they have given us. So if we go over to the logistics competition, <clears throat> they have um, given us project inputs, right? And it's, a, it's very important to read this, right? See what the setup is, right? How to get your account in Starboard and set it to be on the academic license um, because you don't want it to be on the free license. It will not work. Um, definitely look at the project deliverables um, and go through the project tasks um, to solve this problem. So if we look at the project inputs, they have a file that we're going to download. All right, so if you just click on it, it opens up Dropbox. All you need to do is hit the download key. You don't need to sign up. It automatically downloads. Um, if you click the little arrow, if you are in Chrome, it says show in folder. You can then go in and see the data that you just downloaded. Right? And then if I click on it, you can open it up. And you will see across the bottom uh, the set of what we are importing. Um, so if we look at demands, right, so we have the Louisville assembly plant, we are um, using 22,000 airbags in one year, um, and the average order size is 5,000, right? If we look at sources, there's no sources. We're going to have to set up our plants. If we look at activities, which are things that are going on um, that they're setting up for us, here we have, uh, we get it from the, the Michigan Distribution Center, uh, and it's shipping to the Louisville Assembly Plant, and that is an airbag, and it costs us $1.34 each to send that. It weighs 35 pounds, and it's going ground parcel. So that's like when you order an Amazon, uh, something off Amazon, and they bring it to you in the little van, UPS or the Amazon van. That's ground parcel, right? And then you can see that they have 35 pounds is what that, that weighs. But if we look at Cleveland, right, Cleveland is the same thing. We're transporting airbags, but this now weighs 1,000 pounds. So we have, uh, it's more than one, right? Uh, so what they're doing is they're loading it onto a pallet and throwing it into a truck, uh, but it's not filling up the entire semi-truck's trailer. And so that's what's called less than truck load. So LTL, so less than truck load. There are orders from other folks on that semi-trailer. And they'll go to their factory, unload their stock, and then they'll come to our factory and unload our stock. All right. And if we go on down, right, you will actually run into FTL, right, um, which is full truck load, which means the entire 40-foot um, semi-trailer trailer is full of our product and they will come to our warehouse or our factory and then unload the entire trailer because it's a full truckload of our product. The other thing you will see is intermodal. Can't type today. Enter M-O-D-A-L and you will see ocean. Right. Uh, intermodal is uh, enter between um, 
uh, modal different modes right uh, so it is we'll maybe start on a train then go to a truck or truck to train to truck again uh, but basically different paths uh, to get to where we're going that's not just a truck right so typically it's train and a truck here in the United States um, and then we have ocean, right? We load it onto a uh, container ship and we, we put it on the ocean. All right, still very common uh, way to get things across the sea. All right, uh, we don't need those. Um, I'm going to close this. So just, just keep those terms in mind. It is important. Uh, I don't want to save that. Um, and we can close down our... Uh, Dropbox, right? So now we have the blank document. We need to import that data that we just went through. All right, so we're going to say hit our sextant because uh, it's starboard navigator. They may have a new name for it, but the reason they have the sextant is navigators use the sextants. Uh, and we're going to import. We're going to select the file that we want to import, and that is our demand data. So we're going to open that up. Mine says one because I have a copy there. Um, and we want to click off the new scenario because we just made a new scenario. Make sure you're in North America because that's where we are, and hit import. And then this is going to churn and think for a little bit. And you need to be patient. But when it gets to the end of it, you're going to get a bunch of import warnings all right and i kind of look through these there's like 143 of them um for the most part we can ignore them there's nothing anything special we can do it's just the things that they left out uh, when they've setting up this data for this competition so we can close that and then we can see that we have three icons that look like a little crane two icons that look like a uh, house and then some uh, little dots scattered around. The cranes are our ports of entry. All right, so we have three of those. We have the port of Long Beach, we have the port of El Paso, and we have the port of no Norfolk. Right, two of them are on the ocean, a typical port that you would think. Uh, but the third one here, the port of El Paso, so it's a port of entry, um, and that's where if it's being made, made in Mexico, we can truck it across the border, enter the United States. Um, and bring it to our factory. So typically that's on either via truck or a train. All right. Uh, what we don't have, right, um, is a plant that's producing things. So that's going to be the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do. Um, the other thing that we have is we have these two things that look like houses. Um, those are our warehouse. So we have the potential to put a warehouse in Maryland or a potential for a warehouse in Michigan. Right. And then the dots, right, either the blue or the green, uh, the dots are uh, the assembly plants for Ford. Right. So we have that one there for Ford. There's quite Ford is headquartered in Detroit. So we have quite a few around the Detroit, Michigan area. Um, so those are our customers. All right. So again, the idea is we are making products somewhere in the world. We're bringing it to the United States, bringing it to the warehouse, and then distributing it to all the customers, which are other Ford plants. All right. So we need to set up a a factory building our items. So if we look here at this table, um, we have uh, sell prices and transportation information, right? So we're getting going from Shanghai, China. Uh, we're bringing in airbags and seat belts. It takes 20 days or 19 days on the water. Uh, and then they come through the port. It's $1.10 per pound uh, to enter the port. Um, so let's go back to our model and let's make the Shanghai, China supplier. All right, the plant that's there. So I'm just going to come over to China. It doesn't matter. I can totally click it in this in the middle of the sea somewhere. Um, I'm going to right click, all right, and then I'm going to hit Add. But before I hit Add, make sure you're on Plant because that's what we're putting down. We're not putting a warehouse or a customer. We're putting a plant. Hit Add, all right, and it's going to drop it there in the middle of the sea, uh, which doesn't help us any. Um, but we can open that up, and what we're going to do right is type in Shanghai Shanghai China and I'm gonna and when we hit tab right it is going to 
geolocate that for us uh, and then change that to People's Republic of China because that's where Shanghai is. All right, and then let's go ahead and give it a name. All right, we'll call it Shanghai China. And then we can hit this little arrow here and it makes it disappear. And you'll notice that we're no longer sitting in the sea. We have instead come over here to uh, Shanghai itself, and there is where our plant is. All right, if you want to expand this, right, so you can click on it uh, to select it and then hit this little arrow, that makes it big. This little arrow makes it small, gets it out of your way. If you just click out somewhere not on anything, it makes it completely go away to clear up your screen. But we're going to go into Shanghai, China. Right, we're going to say, "Hey, we are supplying airbags, and sea belts, right?" Um, and then we're going to add in that the airbags are 10.75, seat belts are three dollars and fifty cents, and our travel time is 19 days. So we're going to hit new activity, right? And we're going to do that three times because I just said we are going to do three things, right? So I'm going to do three of those, right? And we're going to have the activity of seat belt cost I'm going to have an activity of airbag cost and then I'm going to have an activity of shipping time All right and so on the shipping time we need to change this from cost to duration and then the other thing we need to do is seat belts are not all the products. All the products are airbags and seat belts, right? And airbags are not all the products. So we need to go in here and change this to be just seat belts and just airbags to match those two up. Otherwise, you'll wind up having twice the, you'll be charging both of those um, every time you make one part. All right, so airbag, airbag, seat belt, seat belt. All right, and then we just need to put in the numbers. So airbags, if we go back here, airbags are ten seventy-five, and seat belts are three dollars and fifty cents. All right, so airbag ten point seven five, seat belt three point five, oops, three point five zero. Don't get it, it will drop that trailing zero. It's okay, it's still $3.50. And then we're going to hit the shipping time, and that is 19. All right, so airbags 1075, seat belts are $3.50, and the shipping time is 19 days to get to where we're going. All right, so that is fully filled up, right? We have product currently in China. However, it's not going anywhere. We don't have a connection between it and Long Beach. Okay, so one thing to note, each of your factories has a different port of entry. All right, Shanghai, China goes into Long Beach, California. All right, which is this one here. It's outside of LA. Okay, so we need to make a connection. So you want to start on your factory and you're going to right click, right? And we're going to say connect. Okay, now this is the place where Starboard is a little weird because we are not sending this via truck um, across the ocean. Okay, however, I don't have an option for ocean. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say FTL FX. Okay, uh, I don't think it really matters, but I'm going to pick that one and then I'm going to say. Um, I'm going to Long Beach. Now again, this is going to set up, but it makes that connection, right? So now I have a connection there. I can hit the X and it goes away, right? This sets up that we are driving a truck across the ocean, which makes no sense, okay? So what we have to do is fix that, okay? Um, and so what, we, you, what you will do is you'll move your mouse cursor. If you're on that little hand that you see, right, if you click and drag, the hand will, will grab the scene and move it around, right? But if you go, right, there is a point where that hand turns into a pointer finger, and that means you're on that connection. So click it then, right, and it'll highlight that connection. And so this is the trucking to Port of Long Beach, right? And I'm going to click that, open it up, and then I'm going to say Ocean. I think it's a bug in the system. It's really kind of weird. But then you'll see, right, um, that we are on the ocean for that amount of time.
okay and so now I have that connection right and it turns this weird green that is terrible for red green colorblind people like me um, but I am now getting product from the ocean from this factory across the ocean into the port of Long Beach okay and then you'll notice right I have had some network costs and some baseline data and now my network is starting to come alive right I have all these green dots over here and so from the port of LA I have this solid line right and everything else is dashed right and what it's saying is okay now I'm now I have product flow it comes in from China goes through the port and then comes up to my distribution warehouse in this case it's going to the Detroit warehouse and then it's filtering out to all my customers right and all these customers in green are one day right and the customers in blue are two days away so it looks like most of my customers except for this one are getting uh, the product in a total of three days or less okay after it's come the 19 days over the water Okay, now one of the things that we need to do, right, if we look at this, the cost to enter the port, right, is $1.10 per pound, right, uh, and that's a landing fee, right, so let's go into the port, let's open that up, right, and then let's add a new activity of a landing fee. All right, so I've added that landing fee in there that goes to all product, all right, all product. Uh, and that was, if we look at our thing, a dollar ten to enter in to that into that port. All right, so you notice, boom, that just updated, right? And we just have an additional million dollars or so uh, that went for just landing those products, all right? Because each one of those is a dollar ten per pound to land. Okay. Um, and so now that automatically updates, right? So now we have a network, okay? It is important, right, um, to to pay attention. Um, if you ever get a network that is it's turning out to be zero, what you have probably done, right, is you have a supplier that's not a plant, right? So I can go into this port of entry, right? And I can open it up and I can say, hey, this is supplying product, right? This is only for plants that are building product, right? So if I click that on, then this is going to go to zero. Just something to be aware, right? In your model, only the plants, only the plants are what should be supplying product. That way you get product flow through everything, okay? So now, right, um, you can go in set up your Mexican supplier and set up your Romanian supplier all right and when you do that all right I'll go to the one that I've already put together it'll look something like this right and this is the port the part where I would say hey let's call this baseline and let's just leave it there right um, that way you have all the information in right and then you can go down here you can delete and you can copy all right duplicate um, the scenarios and you can set different things to be the baseline because that's going to show that the delta between the two right and I would probably start off by doing a China only and a Mexico only and a Romania only right and if we look at that we'll look at Mexico because we haven't seen that right here we have Mexico and notice I've deleted the factories that don't make sense and I still haven't determined which warehouse I want to use okay so I have um being made in Mexico, truck to the border, crosses in El Paso, and then it's brought to the Michigan distrib distribution hub, and then it goes out to the customers. All right? Same thing with Romania. All right? Um, Romania, it's built in Romania, comes in Norfolk, goes on out. Okay. Now, these are simplified. It gives you some very basic. You're going to want to explore what happens if I build airbags in China and seatbelts in Mexico or seatbelts in Mexico and airbags in Romania or what if I build in Air Romania and China. Okay. So this is the part where you need to do your research and figure out um, what is uh, the best uh, the best way to move forward right and so you can make different scenarios and that way it keeps all the keeps all the data for you um, the other thing right is you can go into here and you can start looking at your analysis right so if we do Romania only right we're buying seat belts and airbags right they're all coming from Romania right um, 
we can see our cost breakdown, right? The airbags are much more expensive than the seat belts, so that's our total cost there. But look, we have $2 million of transport, $2, $2 million of import cost, um, a million dollars of, of facility lease. And I think this transport, um, I didn't name it very well, right? But if we go into here, right? Um, you will notice that I did not put in, right, that we are, uh, the, the delay, unless it's over here, uh, the delay that is for, uh, from Romania, right, so I need to put in that it is 20 days on the water duration, right, so make sure your make sure your models are correct and up to date all right and you need to double check because i didn't do it and you'll see here that this is not this is not where it needs to be it's not accurate um, shipping time all right so now we have the 20 days on there and then if we go in and look at our product right now our activities are going to update um, we just have the transport, we have the import costs, we have the facility lease, um, and if we go and look at our facilities, right, here is, um, the breakdown by the, by each of the facilities, um, and you can kind of see, uh, all this information that's up in here, I'll let you play with it, that will help you make your decision, okay? Now, the other thing that you can do, right, once you have all this set up, is you can start using what's called the solver, right? And you want to definitely make certain that you leave the baseline and make a copy for whatever you're doing here, right? So let's switch over to the China one, right? Um, and let's go ahead and let's try to figure out, right? Right now it's going to the warehouse in Michigan, but we don't know if that's right. So let's say, hey, let's solve for... Um, total landed costs through the warehouses, right? So you can change this. You can say, hey, what's the best plant? What's the, the best uh, service facility? Um, which gives me the, the best time? Um, so if we want like just at cost, right? You can say, hey, pick me the best warehouse um, the, of the ones we've gotten, right? Um, and it's going to go and it's going to say, hey, when I look at this, this is the best warehouse, right? If you go and you let's solve for time, right you may get a different answer right if we do a uh, customer service time i don't think so because most of them are around uh detroit right so that's not going to change but here's the thing right um you are not limited in these two warehouses right what if we close both of these and placed it somewhere say in ohio or indiana or wherever right um because if you're bringing it in from china right the if it's in indiana then the shipping from here to here is much cheaper right so all, all those decisions factor in if i'm bringing it in from romania right if i go to the romania only right now this warehouse right is now suddenly the correct one to use right because the cost of getting it into the warehouse from romania is so much less all right and you'll see that now that one's active and now that's where all the product is leaving from all right so it's not all right so once you learn how to to, to use these solvers you can solve for the best whatever so the best warehouse the best plant the best service facility you can look at cost you can go do service time end to end service time so that's the the shortest amount of time from the plant all the way across the water, but you have to have all your info in and in the right spot. Um, you can start playing those games, that analysis um, of what is the best thing to do, right? And this is where everybody's project is going to go a little bit different, right? Because if we look here, right, they want you to identify the metrics that you think are important for this problem, right? So this is... You know, what's most important? Is it total cost? You need to justify that, right? We want the cheapest possible. I don't care if it takes 10 days to get to the customer, right? Um, it's got to be as cheap as possible, 
right? Or maybe you want to say, I want it as fast as possible to the plant because if I don't have parts, I have an entire plant of people not working, right? Um, what does that cost, right? So you might need to do some research on what does the plant shutdown cost, right? Um, <clears throat> so, or you might think about what's the total lead time. If I'm getting things from China or if I'm getting things from Romania, is that going to cause problems and plant shuts down if it takes too long uh, as opposed to getting it from Mexico, which had a much shorter lead time, right? You need to look at, it. I have uh, one of my warehouses in the middle of Detroit uh, or near Detroit in a very expensive part of Detroit. Does that make sense? Or are there much cheaper places I can put my warehouse where the labor rate is less, where the cost of land is less, right? That you're going to propose if we do all that, it's cheaper to operate, it's cheaper to buy the land, and it's cheaper to ship there, right? So you need to figure that out, right? Um, you know, so there, this is one of those where there's not uh, a necessarily a right or wrong answer, but there's more right and more wrong answers, right? Because whatever you come up with, um, the scenarios that you're going to build, right, uh, you need to analyze and understand and be able to justify why you're saying go this way, right? So you're going to pick the performance metrics that you think are best. Is it price? Is it money? Is it shipping time? Or is it a blend of the three? And what's the blend? Right? That is for you to determine and you to justify. Um, and then you're going to build scenarios, right? Um, select the best combination of suppliers, or maybe it's all one, um, that fits those performance metrics that you want, right? Uh, supplier can do one product or it can do both products, right? Uh, design a distribution plan from the suppliers to the warehouses, right? And I'm saying that you can, um, because C says decide if you want Livonia or Laurel, um, I'm going to say that you may choose uh, a third option, which is a warehouse in a different spot. All right, and then calculate the average service time, right? Um, calculate the cost of the to uh, so calculate all your metrics, um, and then if you can start maybe looking at different transportation modes. Maybe I want to know intermodal across the United States. Um, maybe I want to use LTL or FTL um, in a different area. How does that impact my costs? Um, and then you know play with the warehouse size. If I start if I start inventorying more product, if I double the size of my warehouse, what happens? All right, um, so hopefully this helps you get through um, this software a little bit more. I will tell you last, right, if you go here to this red thing, there is a quick tour, how-to, and playbooks, which is how to do things. Those are all videos, and they are all uh, really quick, two or three minutes, and they show you a lot. I would start there, and then if you go to the help command, right, um, you can search for help. Um, and they will kind of try to target where uh, you need to be. Typically, um, it gets you close, um, and then uh, when you click one of these, it opens up either one of these, but you can go into deeper uh, meaning uh, and go to their website. So there'll be a link, and you click on their website, and the website tends to be a good place to also look. All right, but I would start in those two areas. I'd start with the videos, and then I would go to help. All right, hopefully this helped you guys. Thanks.